Morning, folks. Hope you had a good weekend and <coughs> not too much of your fences were blown away. <coughs> a couple of panels went next door, uh, uh, leading up against my green gauge tree. Uh, right, um, <coughs> skies. Skies. Speaking to a friend yesterday who uh, got some blue skies. Well, I'm not a great lover of blue skies. I like the uh, the, the clouds in the sky <clears throat> so I'll take a bit of advice from my friend a bit of a bit of um, linseed and a bit of dryer this is uh, on 3mm MDF and this particular batch you don't need to, to uh, rub down to make it rough because it's as soon as you put the uh, gesso on, or whatever you use, whether it's uh, PVA glue, doesn't matter because you've got a, a a neutral surface to work on anyway. A bit of ochre in there. I'll do my sort of meadowy scene, but I want this to be a a tree, a, a, a sky painting essentially, with just the support of uh, of a, a bit of a landscape. Oh, there we are. We've got a, a basis of a sky uh, now. I'm now painting fat over lean, but with um, no, I'm not absolutely 100% sure of this. But fat over lean is okay when you're working over a period of time on a painting. But it's no good putting um, thin paint over partially dried uh, thick paint. Lean. So if, if your you know, underneath is uh, a little bit is damp, it's not dry. If you put some, um, no, it's wrong, wrong way around. Fat over lean, fat over lean, fat, yeah, lean, fat over lean. Lean being the thinness of this uh, sky and foreground. And if that dries and you put thick paint over it, the drying process. If it's not completely dry, will crack, eventually crack the surface of the, the the fat paint. But when you're working a la prima, as I do, painting from start to finish, and if I add some P, uh, some alkyd resin, uh, titanium white to my bulk of white, then it won't it won't crack. Nothing will happen to it because the dryer will dry everything as it as it dries because of the alkyd resin in it but uh, I'm not sure about, about being a bad, bad technique for a la prima because this will be wet when I put the thicker paint on and it will all dry uniformly so we'll do that we'll put a bit of uh, griffin this is the alkyd resin Winsor Newton alkyd titanium white that's a fast drying oil so let's just I need to get another tube of this. Uh, well, I need uh, some watercolour paper as well, some uh, 90 pound watercolour paper. Uh, right, okay, now I'm going to put in a touch of
Right, I'll give that a try. Uh, we'll use a bit of cloth. I'm recording this on a uh, 32 gigabyte uh, memory card uh, and I hope that it'll still maintain its uh, detail um, and take much less time to to download onto onto the uh, onto the laptop. So this is 64. And we'll, we'll see what happens. So I'm going to put a little bit of um, the blue, so slightly light, darker blue. Soften all that. All right. Okay. There won't be any cloud shadow under them, I don't think. Oh, sort of okay. Oh, okay, that's a Right, okay, well we don't need to do much more than that, let's put in a bit up here. Right, now we're going to do some trees under that. Get my good tree brush, that's that one. Eventually the, the uh, bristles will wear out, and with these uh, cheapo brushes as they wear they get better you've got loads of points for stippling and there are loads of these filaments just for tamping right now we're going to put in just a little bit of uh, meadowy stuff a bit of paint spray a bit of red a bit of oil Now this is our prima working on wet, wetting wet. Get a bit of red in there.
Okay, let's get a bit of a got a bit of dark in there. Get a bit of Payne's Payne's grey. I love mixing Payne's grey with with the yellow. Okay, so it should be a golf course we can uh Right, we'll go back to a bit of bit of stipple on there. Uh so my stipple brush, I'll use that one. Still a little bit damp, I don't know why, but anyway, need a bit of oil for this, so a bit of burnt sienna, a bit of, bit of this. I think this is probably all I'm going to do today, this one because I need to go over to Wilco's, get a beer mix for my next brew. Like that, look, just, I said my usual colours, you don't need me to tell you what they are. Unless you follow, you don't, you're new, then you can watch some more videos. I did one of these yesterday, before my dinner. They're great fun to do. Look, it's giving that impression of of grass. I think the photograph of yesterday's one did flatter it rather. It, it wasn't quite as bright as the camera compensated for it was pretty pretty dark yesterday the wind was blowing gale force winds knocked down your your animals <laughs> we had a really rough couple, couple of over three days and it's still going on We'll get some light greens in there. So a bit of white, a bit of just dip it in there. Just put some of that and just put a bit of softness with these little bristles. Just a bit of subtle blending and bring it in some air. Bit of bit of burnt sienna. So we're getting these lighter browns. 
Yeah, we want some dark in there. To mix a bit of Payne's Grey with uh, Sierra, it makes a lovely dark. Oh, just using it as a brush, just to create the illusion of of detail. Right. I'll put some paper in there. I'll, I'll put some. Uh, well, let's just line. Oh, just sort of uh, could be uh, dunes, sand dunes, but in which case we, we don't want a gap in that. Okay, so see, see what's behind the sand dunes. Uh, it's dark green. Right. Uh, now I'm not putting any uh, any branches or twigs or anything in the trees or the bushes are what they are uh, and your brain should really interpret that into this. I mean it's, it's not, a, not a table and chairs is it? If you know what I mean. Well, let's uh, give it a little bit of that. So. Behind the dunes. Oh, that's so we've got some nice red for poppies. Ooh. No, don't want that lump on there. Well, oh, we've got it now, haven't we? No, I don't like that. Okay, I think we're overdoing that. Right, it's a bit more rough ground. Um, let's uh, put a couple of figures in. I like put my little. Oh, I always have white. Oh, that's not very good, is it? Uh... 
Uh, no, that's not really much, is it? Let's take him off. It's obviously because I've um, put a lot of oil on here and it's not sticking. Right, let's do that again. Uh, That red one in. Okay, that'll, that'll do. So, behind the dunes, looking for a, a golf ball behind the dunes. No, we we'll call it uh, behind the dunes. Uh, and the marron grass would be the other side, wouldn't it? Uh, okay, well, we'll dismantle. Hmm. Probably nothing tomorrow, folks, because uh, it's the weekly bike ride, bike ride along the wonder and I'm being coming up to quite a, a good old age but I'd like to, <laughs> to rest after the the uh, the exercise of the morning ramble of, of bike ride uh, right I've got a, I've got a mount so all I'll do is get this uh, tape off put that in there put that in there right okay take that off They always look better in a frame. I've got, a, I've got another two of these, so I'll do at least another two oil paintings, probably. And then I'll go back to watercolours. Right, perfect. A couple of pins. And tomorrow, we, if you don't know, we we travel through Morden Hall Park. We, it's all in the Bonnetal Valley. Uh, it's absolutely lovely, and there's a boardwalk through the wetlands where all the, the grasses are that so inspire me with the trees, even the trees without any tr leaves on, have got bushes and ivy climbing up them and it's like being in the middle of the countryside but in fact it's uh, just a bit of South London suburbia South London, North East Surrey, that's I like to designate now where we live but the, the River Wandle, it's a very very nice little river, it was um, much abused in the 19th century with all the mills it had about 90 mills working on it polluting it absolutely and the last time it was really polluted was in the 60s when i think bp had a, a vinyl works 
nearby and because they were chipping everything I was using the water um, but it was ecologically dead but thanks to them closing the factories and reinstating nice housing estates and, and the environment agency cleaning up the river it's beautiful now trout all sorts barbell uh, trout I've said that haven't I uh, I haven't seen any pike, but big, big carp. So it's so we do care for this river, and it goes from well, it runs for about 16 miles from from the Caterham Hills, we believe. We're not sure uh, to the Thames through uh, uh, built-up uh, land. But it's a lovely river. It's on YouTube with uh, one of the walks that John Rogers has done. He's done loads of them, we, and we watched quite a lot of them. Not just in, in, uh, in the city, the, in London, but further afield through Hertfordshire, the Chilterns, uh, lovely. Have a look, you'll, you'll be inspired, and you'll, you'll be inspired like me to paint rough, rough stuff. Anyway, enough about me, I'll get this uploaded. Thanks for watching folks, I'll clean the brushes in fairy liquid which is a washing up liquid and I've got red paint everywhere so I'll dump that in the bin and I'll see you soon bye bye